Christmas Eve special. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Vintage Stuff Guy. I haven't done a video for a long time due to other commitments, but I shall do a few now while I'm on holiday. In this video, we'll be looking at this laptop, my ThinkPad, and I will show you why I think the Windows Vista isn't all that bad. This is a Core Duo computer running at 1.83 GHz with Vista Business and 3 GB of RAM. I run Windows Vista on this computer, and we, in this house, have several others running the OS. Another with the business version, and two with Home Premium installed. Simon Royal, a low-end Mac writer, used Windows Vista before biting the bullet and upgrading to the dreaded Windows 8, and when people were Vista bashing all over the internet, wrote an article to ask the question, does Windows Vista deserve its bad reputation? I, in this video, will also ask that question and, I hope, answer it for some people and possibly even persuade some die-hard XP fans to upgrade. Be prepared to be transported to the magical world of 2007. And a jump cut. Whoa! Windows Vista is often accused of being a very resource-hungry and heavy operating system, like Mac OS X was in its infancy. It is true, but with a good machine, that isn't at all a problem. The main reason for this bloatedness is the pretty aero appearance, which, although unnecessary, does send a breath of fresh air after the god-awful thick blocks of red, green and blue that its predecessor, WinXP, offered. Many people use the classic theme in Windows XP due to its childish appearance, and those with slower systems can use that on Windows Vista, which nullifies the idea that the system is too pretty and graphics heavy. With Windows Vista came the search function, built into the start menu, and the sidebar, which although many people don't use it, I find it handy for weather feed and the battery monitor. Like Mac OS's dashboard, the world is quite divided on how useful it is. These came alongside some other new features. Along with these useful additions to Windows, came some very silly ones, like Microsoft's attempt to copy Apple's expose. Despite Microsoft's recent desperate seeming attempts at persuading people to update to their new Windows 8 by making it cheaper to customers using Windows Vista, I will not and will never upgrade. I mean, come on, it's like trying to merge iOS with OS X. I think Windows 8 is great for the Microsoft Surface, for a full desktop or laptop system. It just doesn't work for me. You wouldn't have gotten your desktop PC in the 90s and put Windows CE on it, would you? Don't try and fix something which already works. Now, I know many of you viewers are now writhing in horror. With that attitude, there would be no innovation, no change. You are no true Apple fan. And I know. You just have to gauge what would be a good idea and what won't. Apple made the right call on the original iMac by using only USB ports, because the commonly used ports at the time were old and outdated, like SCSI. We needed a small port which was universal to all machines and was plug and play. What they didn't do was introduce Mac OS X and say, that's it, no more support for Mac OS 9 and no, over or no way of retaining old software. Stuff, friend. What they said was, here's your new operating system and we will continue to provide security updates for the old one for a while and we'll provide a method of using your old software within the new system. Apple made a compatible new operating system until 2005 and continued to support the last version until 2007. Sometimes forcing something upon the consumers is a good idea, but you need to be pretty sure that it will go down well, and if there are issues, you need to help the people unable to upgrade for a while. Apple is no saint. They are the masters of forced obsolescence, but at least they choose the right moment. That was a little bit of a sidetrack, so let's return to Windows Vista. Of course, Windows Vista isn't the perfect operating system, but it carved the path leading to the very popular Windows 7 and away from the 90s, and ultimately Windows XP. Windows XP was generally a winner, eliminating DOS with a good range of compatible hardware, but in my opinion, it was a stepping stone, the first one, leading to the second, more important stepping stone of Windows Vista, before you have crossed this metaphorical river into the true 21st century and in the land of Windows 7. But. Although Windows Vista did act as a stepping stone, XP did not, resulting in a vast amount of people still using it today, a 12 year old operating system. That's like using one of these instead of your new iPhone. 
Because of the radical change in appearance of Windows Vista, many people look down upon it, thus missing out one of the important metaphorical stones, making the jump to Windows 7 a little bit harder. My IBM here came from 2006, a year before Windows Vista was readily available, and runs the system beautifully. No operating system is meant to run on age-old machines. Try running any of Microsoft's offerings on their minimum required hardware, and it will always crawl. So to summarise, error can be deactivated. Our system requirements, well, if you have an old computer, then it was built for old software. Don't expect too much out of your 800 MHz Celeron. It looks nicer and has many useful features XP lacked and still works like a normal computer. <coughs> Windows 8. <coughs> Check out this supposedly persuasive table from Microsoft's website. The familiar desktop? Well, why wouldn't I expect a desktop from my computer? Works with mouse and keyboard. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Works with Word, Excel, Outlook and other familiar programs. And of course the two ticks meaning that, that one being Windows Vista, that being Windows 8. Look at all the lovely ticks, woo. Built for touch PCs and tablets. Well, I don't want a touch operating system for my laptop, so I don't care. Apt from the Windows Store, well, I can't afford new programs anyway, so I couldn't care less. Mail, people, and other built-in apps, well, I have Outlook, don't forget that Microsoft, you've made that for many years, and, well, I never use calendar and contact apps anyway, who does? Keeps your settings on all, and apps on all your PCs and devices. Well, I, well that's, I wouldn't mind that so much, but still, I only have one Windows laptop anyway, so it just notifies that. Bing Smart Search to find things across web, apps, and your PC. Well, Bing Search is awful, and you can already search from my computer anyway in Windows Vista, so that's a lie, naughty. Start screen with live updates. Uh, but I just, Faster startup times. Now that's a great one. I've seen Windows 8 computers start up and they're like lightning. So, uh, uh, that's the one feature which I actually value, to be honest. No, Microsoft didn't do a very good job making that table. Basically, you just stated that Windows 8 has some normal features as well as its outrageously stupid ones. Ah, Gad! Almost forgot! This, the all important snipping tool. It's just like pressing Apple Shift 4 on a Mac, but with a snipping tool and, and pictures of scissors. <laughs> ah! Snip mania. So, though I will never install Windows 8 on this laptop, I'm going to attempt to install it on a 999 MHz Pentium PC from 1998 because it pretty much meets all system requirements, so why not give it a go, that's what I say. With Windows Vista came the search function. Bleh. Despite Microsoft's depths Bing by making it despite Microsoft's recent desperate attempts seem it was built for old software. Don't expend... So to end, I have this sentiment. Windows Vista can be compared to the iPhone. They're both slightly heavier than the other ones, but they look quite a lot nicer. And in this Christmas Eve special... <laughs>